You know, these tariffs, I can't speak to them. I'm probably unqualified to speak to the uh, macro view and what the benefits or not are to the country. But from our lens, in the short term, they are pesky, they are frustrating, but they are manageable. Uh, I think the numbers are similar to the last time we talked. Our, our primary aim at this point remains the same, which is to insulate our customers from these tariffs. In fact, the new list 4A and 4B, we've told our suppliers, we're not accepting price changes, and you're going to have to work further up the supply chain to deal with any of the outcomes of those. So your, your suppliers are the ones taking more of the hit than from uh, the impact of the trade war. Have you seen any kind of trickle-down effect from that, or, or do you believe that Ace Hardware is big enough that it can, it can really kind of maintain that pricing power with your suppliers? Well, if you look at our third quarter, for example, our revenue was up 7.2 percent, and I'd say about 100 to 125 basis points of that is inflation-related, and of course a chunk of that is tariff. So it is, it is having an impact, but again, it's manageable. Hey, John, assuming uh, December 15 uh, goes into effect, does that share of margin compression change? Again, our, our primary aim remains to insulate our customers from these. And if they come down, uh, that's the number one strategy. The second is we end up absorbing some of those internally corporately. And the truth is, at the end, when they slide through, they end up in, you know, to the consumer with a higher price. But that is the last uh, of the options. Have the tariffs impacted your inventory management strategy at all? Have you had to kind of pull forward some of your reserves in order to account for what's going on with the trade war? No. Our, our inventory management practices haven't changed at all as a result of this. Remember, our, of our 4,600 U.S. stores, these are all locally owned and operated, and their primary gal is going to be in stock regardless of the macroeconomic factors or wherever the, the tweets are around uh, tariffs these days. So that does not change at all. These guys are going to be in stock, particularly as we enter the holiday season. That's their first choice. John, we always talk to you about tariffs for obvious reasons, but I mean, it was a good quarter. Uh, U.S. same-store sales up 3.4 percent. What in particular sort of seems to be driving things? Are there any, anything, you know, that you can cite in terms of that number? Yeah, we had a, a nice quarter, and I'd say it's primarily driven by three things. Uh, first is our digital business continues to accelerate. Uh, our acehardware.com business was up 81 percent in the quarter. Second, we opened 48 new stores. Uh, 39 of those were in the U.S., and that helps fuel our growth. And then lastly, as you mentioned, our comps were up 3.4 percent. And the credit for that squarely falls on the shoulders of our local owners who continue to impress me with their ability to adapt and capitalize on this new retail landscape in which we operate. So I give them a lot of credit. They continue to plow forward despite whatever the news is of the day. What does that mean, capitalize on this new retail landscape? What are they doing? Well, you hear a lot in the media about a retail revolution or you hear about the retail apocalypse, and I think that misses the point. I think there's two things going on. There's a logistics and a labor revolution going on, and what we see is that's forcing a real bifurcated retail market. On one end of the spectrum is the low-service, low-price discount boxes, and you see many of them reporting and doing very well. And then the other end of the spectrum is the high-touch, high-service, ultra-convenient specialty retail. And of course, that's where our retailers play, and, and their focus remains on high-service, high touch you know convenience because they're right in the market three quarters of the u.s is within three uh 15 minutes of an a store and then of course differentiated high quality product i want to ask you about pricing in a couple different categories because lumber keeps getting mentioned in some of the earnings calls of uh, the publicly traded companies and then we've seen great runs in names like uh, sherwin williams i wonder whether or not uh paint you think has that kind of momentum behind it fundamentally it does. We, we are not quite as uh, impacted by lumber. We do have stores that have it, but generally that's not impacting us with some of the deflation others have seen there. Uh, you know, there's 268 categories in a hardware store, but our goal is to become famous for four, and you mentioned one of them, which is paint. We just struck a deal with Benjamin Moore Paint, so we'll be the only national branded retailer that has what we believe is the most premium branded paint in the U.S. And then power equipment, Barbecue, which is really big this time of, time of year, and home wow. preservation. Those four remain our growth strategy and fueling, quite frankly, most of our comp growth. Uh, John, our Jim Cramer talked about, you know, the e-commerce strategies among your peers, Home Depot, Lowe's, and kind of looking at the differentials uh, within their earnings results over the last week. I mean, you guys, you know, as you mentioned, up 81 percent for AceHardware.com. Uh, what do you think is the buying behavior for hardware stores in an online capacity that, that made those sales so much more successful during the quarter? 
I think that speaks again to how I talk about our local stores adapting and capitalizing on where the retail landscape is changing. So our business was up 81%. 92% of that dot-com business through hardware.com was either in-store pickup, what the industry calls BOPUS, buy online, pick up in store, or deliver from our local store. And as you may recall, last time we talked about, we were trying to differentiate the delivery by using our assets, our stores, our trucks, and our people to actually do that last mile delivery to their local customers. And because our stores are so ubiquitous, it really does help us leverage where the, the consumer is moving again to that ultra hyper convenient experience. We, we tend All to right. say, we're gonna be faster than Amazon on stuff we stock because we're already in the neighborhood.